today we will see what is object oriented programming. Not the programming details but only the concepts. It is a kind of programming where one or more objects interact with one another to complete a task. Here the programming revolves around objects. So what is an object? You will be seeing me through your computer or laptop. Both the computer and the laptop are seen as two different objects. And you as a person who is watching is also seen as an object. So there are two objects, a computer and a person object. If you see the current session, I, a human object or a person object is talking to a camera that is again another object. And sometimes I might begin using the board which is another object. So basically the real world situation is comprised of objects and those objects interact with one another. That is how object oriented programming came into existence. Let's see a few examples. Here are certain objects hidden in these sentences. In the first sentence it is you are sitting on a chair. You and chair are two different objects. In the second example, a dog is drinking milk. Here, dog and milk are two different objects. Third example, a man is pouring coffee into a coffee mug. Here, man, coffee and coffee mug. All of these are three different objects because we can realize their existence. When I say milk, we can see it. When I say coffee mug, it is there. So all of those that we can see are called objects or entities. In all these three examples, we have some additional information. Leaving out the objects. You are sitting on a chair. A dog is drinking milk. A man is pouring coffee into a coffee mug. In English language, all these are nothing but the verbs the action parts and here in object oriented programming the actions that the two objects or one of the two objects do these are called methods in programming language if you see the first example you are sitting on a chair here you and chair are two different objects a person object and a chair object the person object what it does the action that it does here is sitting the chair object holds the object that is sitting on it. So there are two actions done by both the objects. And if we go to the second example, a man is pouring coffee into a coffee mug. Here, again, a man, a human object is interacting with another object called coffee mug. And where is the other object? The coffee is inside the coffee mug. So here there are three objects that are interacting. A human object, that is tilting the coffee mug and coffee mug the object which is actually taking care of pouring the contents of coffee or receiving the contents of coffee into it. So these are the actions that are done by these three objects. So this is an example where two or more objects are interacting with one another. Let's move on to an example where one or more objects are contained within another object. This is the scenario where the object oriented programming is applied in real time context. See an example where we wanted to design a room. I'll be giving out just the specification of what all should be contained within a room. Say I can have one or more lights, I can have one or more fans, I can have a switchboard, I can have one or more doors, I can have a table one or more human beings in the room and I can have electronic gadgets. Electronic gadgets can be a cell phone, a CD player, a television, a laptop, computer or set-top box. So I just give you a specification and ask you to design a room. What you do? You go and find out what kind of room you wanted. Say a kitchen or a living room or a bedroom or a children's room or say an office room and you find out what kind of lights that would be suited for that particular room and you find out 
What kind of fans do you want? There are different kinds of fans that we have. Ceiling fan, table fan, or in case of kitchen, you might have an exhaust fan too. So you list them one by one and find out for one particular kind of room, what kind of things that has to go inside the room. Designing a room is for one particular purpose. And every object that are contained within that room also has its own purpose for existence. Say light. It is something that brightens up the room and the only thing that any light have in common is it should get on and it should get off. Again fan, it has three main purposes. One is get switched on, switched off and it has to vary the speed. And if you take the electronic gadgets, here again, it is nothing but an electronic device which needs to be on and off. And all of these have one particular thing in common. The action that they do or the action that they do is play something. Play music, play video or play music and video together. So all of these are actions that are done by different objects. Whatever we have listed as specifications that goes to form a room. The lights, the fans, the electronic gadgets, the doors. So here we have seen an object has an action. So many objects have their own actions to do. So basically, if I, a person object has to switch on the fan, I'll have to go to the switchboard and press it on. Only then the fan object will receive the command and then it will process it accordingly. Whether it is already on, it will not allow us to do an another on, it, but if it is off, it will allow us to switch on the fan. So basically here, the objects encompasses the actions that particular object is supposed to do. But object doesn't have or doesn't do only the actions alone. It has its own state. Say I, a person object, will have my own state, can be of two different types, my physical state and my mental state. So this is something that I know about myself. How tall I am and how are my features and what is my characteristics. All these comprise a person object. But what does the person do? He or she can talk, run, jump, sing. All of these are kind of actions that goes on to make a person object. So any object will have a state and a behavior. State is something static that the object knows about itself. Action is something that the object does with the state that it has got. So an object is nothing but a combination of a state and a behavior. Behavior is nothing but the actions. If we take this particular example, say light, there are three things that it can do. It can switch on or it can switch off or it can also be asked to blink. Light is just a general concept. If I tell light, you will have different kinds of light going on in your mind. So those different kinds are nothing but the different types that a light can take still follow the, its general purpose of glowing a place. Some of the different types that a light can take is a tube light, a table lamp and a traffic signal. So these are different kinds of light that go on to substantiate one particular generic concept called light. Similarly for fan, we have three actions, on, off and regulate speed. So what are the different types of fans available? The ceiling fan, table fan and exhaust fan. As I said, every electronic gadget will have its own purpose of existence. Say TV, it can play video and sound, set top box, it can tune to different frequencies, receive signals and it can send it to the TV. Cell phone, another electronic gadget. It can receive a call, transmit voice, make a call, play music or take pictures. All of these that I've listed now are just specific features for that particular electronic gadget. But all of these have one thing in common. What is that? They can switch on, they can switch off and they can play something. What it can play depends on the different kinds of electronic gadgets.
let's take the example of light and learn from it as what makes it a class and an object. If you look at this example of light, as I said earlier, it has got its own state and its own behavior. State is nothing but what it is comprised of. So what is a light comprised of basically bulb, voltage in which it has to operate, a starter, a mounting device and certain other features. All of these comprise the state of the light. The functions that it can do is on, off or blink. All of these are the actions that it has to do. So a class should have both this state and the action. But if I just tell you as light, you just know that light is something that blows up the area. But if I tell you specifically table lamp or tube light, you know that what I'm talking about. Has the imagination, we have the same imagination about the tube light and the table lamp. Whereas if I tell about light, that means you will have different versions of light that you have been thinking. I'll have my own different versions of light I'm thinking. So light is just a blueprint. It just tells about the specifications that will go on to make a light. But if I tell tube light, it is specific. So light, in case of programming, we will be seeing that as a class. Nothing but a blueprint of specification that what all light has to have and what all light has to do. In terms of tube light, it is something that I realize that I can see in existence. So that is called an object. Let's take the example of designing a room and find out the concepts of object oriented programming. As I said earlier, I have a specification of how a room should be. So all of those specifications I have listed here. The light, the fan, the door, the electronic gadgets, the windows. So all of these form a specification of a room. But for me to choose specific things that go on to make a room, I need to find out the list of the different objects that are available in the market. Say for light, it might be a tube light, table lamp, torch or a traffic signal. For a fan, it might be a ceiling fan, table fan, an exhaust fan. A door, it can be a normal door or a French window. So, if I were to design a bedroom, then I'll choose tube light, torch, ceiling fan and electronic devices, laptop, cell phone and TV and a window. To make a bedroom, I've picked out only the desired things that I wanted. Others, I've just eliminated. So, with this, I can very easily construct the bedroom. If I were to pick the things for a kitchen, then I'll choose tube light, exhaust fan, normal door. Other information I did not have for this particular room. Likewise, if I were to design rooms as living room or office room, I'll choose things accordingly. So what I have here is a light and different types of light. So this is called polymorphism. Polymorphism as a name implies poly and morph, different ways of having a behavior. So here I have light, it has its own common actions, but additionally when I choose specific lights, it will have its own additional actions. So for one particular object, I have different states and behavior. This is called polymorphism. And as I said, we need to have a blueprint and something that we can realize. Blueprint is called a class and something that we realize is called an object. So here, the room is called a class, whereas the bedroom, kitchen and the specific rooms are called objects. Next, we are going to see what inheritance is. If you see the same example, light with the different types, I have common actions and I have common action plus additional actions with respect to the specific lights. So when the common actions are the same, I did not write the code related to on and off here, on and off here, on and off here, on and off here. Instead, I can club them as common actions and write it somewhere and then reuse those common actions in the specific 
types of the light. So that way I am not introducing any bugs into the code and my job becomes easy and my understanding also is easier because I need not go and check out every time what are the things that are common across all the different types because all those common actions will be available in one particular area. Once I just see this, I will be able to understand that these are the common actions that are available across the specific types. So this is called inheritance, basically a parent-child relationship. Here, this is the parent and these are the different childs that this particular parent can have. So whatever characteristics that this parent have can still be reused by the child or the child itself can override if necessary the common actions that it wanted to have. So here we have listed out class, object, polymorphism and inheritance. The fourth concept that is available in object oriented programming is encapsulation. Encapsulation is nothing but data hiding and there is similar concept called abstraction. Both of them come under a generic topic called data hiding. Let's take again the same object light. Let me give you two different definitions and find out which is more easier for us to understand. That agent, force or action in nature by the operation of which upon the organs of sight objects are rendered visible or luminous. Or if I just tell you as light which is that you are very easily able to understand. Yes, when we tell light we can easily understand that light is something that glows up an area but that big definition is not required because we can understand the concept of light. So this is abstraction. I am eliminating the unnecessary details and giving only those specific things that are sufficient for us to understand. So this is called abstraction. But what is encapsulation? Encapsulation, I realize an object. Here the specific times tube light, table, lamp, torch and traffic signal. For a traffic signal, what I will see is just the three lights, red, yellow and green. I will not know how it has been implemented or what are the wires or the circuits that are hidden within those lights. I need not know. All I will have to know is there exists a traffic light and it will operate switching from red to yellow, yellow to green and then back to red. So encapsulation is with respect to an object, abstraction is with respect to class. Something that is already in existence, an object will expect to hide its own information. Say I, a person object, would like to hide my details. I will not share how my mental state is with everyone. But if I feel someone as friends, then I will expect to share some of my thinking with them. So, by this way, I am hiding the information that I have got about my own state. But for certain others, I allow the access or share my mental state with them. So that is possible, but all of these come under encapsulation. I will not be open for everyone to access the state I am in. I hide some of the major information that I'll have and expose only those stuffs that they can act on me. Say I'll allow them, enjoy with them or I'll learn with them. But with respect to my own mental state, I'll not share with them. So this is something that is I'm hiding from them. So if we take the example of light, here again, all I can see is a bright light coming out of a tube. It hides the bulb, the electron's movement, the voltage that it has. It just gives me the light alone. So it is not allowing this person object to access the light object because it feels that there is no purpose for a human object to interact with the light object other than just provide instructions to some of the actions that the light has to perform. So this is called encapsulation. Encapsulation is with respect to objects. Whereas abstraction is with respect to understanding the concept. Just that the light is there and it is not bothered about 
the different specifications or the different details or the different actions that a particular object has to perform. It is concerned with the class designing stuff alone. Something like a room and the list of what it has to go. If I just tell that these are the specific things that has to go inside a room, any person who understands this room will be able to understand. So thus we have the different things that go on to make an object oriented programming. Class, object, polymorphism in which one particular object can have different behaviors, the inheritance, the child and parent relationship where the child uses the properties of the parent or it extends its own behavior and new state encapsulation and abstraction which is data hiding. You may be wondering these examples are related to our daily life and not the one that is related to programming that is not related to business. Yes, but the main objective of this session is to expose the students to only the object oriented programming and the concepts behind them. Let's see how the business related functionalities are captured with respect to object oriented programming when we go into the specific programming language Java.